Well, if uh, she joins, then I guess we will be able to incorporate her later in the presentation. Um, uh, Bo Straka, representing the International Association of Falcon Ray and Conservation of Birds of Prey. Um, You are muted. Bomul, you are muted. Please turn on the speaker. Can you hear me now properly? Yes. yes. Yeah, thank you very yes. much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, colleagues. Uh, I am Bohumil Straka from the International Association for Falconry and Conservation of Birds of Prey. And I candidate uh, in the international NGO. Uh, yeah. I will share my screen. I do it myself, but also there is uh, my colleague Patricia Timberio from Italy, uh, who is alternate candidate. I am myself from uh, Czech Republic, but we have headquarters in Brussels, our organization. Uh, our organization has very wide range of, uh, of countries. Uh, we have members in uh, nine countries, and 18 of those countries uh, made together uh, in 2010 and later 2012, 2016 made, uh, made uh, UNESCO recognition. This is so far the largest nomination in history. We learned a lot uh, since the time. Uh, we were quite active in that, so we have been studying the convention we joined many ICH meetings and we built quite some experience that we can offer now to uh, NGO forum. Uh, this is where we are present, except perhaps Central Africa. We are, our, our organization, organizations of our associations are present everywhere. Um, someone could think that falconry is, um, is only very narrow topic, but it is not. It's covering all five aspects of ICH by definition, that as we know is oral tradition, performing our social practices, knowledge and practices concerning nature and universe and traditional craftsmanship, everything including falconers. Uh, even though our main subject is could look narrow, we are not narrow and we are very open. This is our on the on the left you see our headquarters, our house. And we are quite close to European Commission, uh, to the European Parliament, and also, of course, about two, two hours by train from uh, UNESCO headquarters in Paris. So we have quite some experience uh, with negotiations with this, uh, with this uh, bodies, with European Commission, with Parliament, and so on. So we can help to utilize, and we can offer also our contacts. Uh, we have also quite some experience in organizing festive events that we can offer to, to others. Uh, we did organize in the past festivals, uh, conferences, online conferences, live conferences, uh, everything. And all this thing we offer to NGO Forum. Uh, concerning myself, I was first time I joined uh, UNESCO meeting in 2008 in Istanbul. Since uh, NGOs uh, were created, NGO advisory status was created, and since that time, I also participated in six times in ICH uh, committee sessions. Last time it was in Mauritius. Uh, yeah, I was in Vidhuk, Jeju, Paris, Nairobi, and so on. And this is about me a little bit. Uh, by profession, I have uh, I have uh, two specializations. Uh, I have a degree in IT and electronics that can be very useful, I guess, uh, in this COVID virus uh, situation because we have to do many things online. And I have also 
legal legal education and i hopefully we could use also this of my experience i speak english russian and slovak uh what do we offer as as organization as pr experience media experience uh, creation of websites uh, facebook experience twitter instagram ability to design graphics my colleague Patricia Chimberio, who is an his professional graphic. Uh, he, she does make professional graphic. And we can also play a role with translational languages and so on. So, so, excuse, this is all. Excuse me, for inter excuse me for interrupting. This is all. So I'm, I'm just asking you to wrap up because you've gone over time. Yeah, thank this, you. Is, this is exactly the end. Thank you very much for your, for your, uh, for your uh, listening and and uh, if you support me, you will not regret. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now I would like to open the floor for uh, questions, which I, I guess we could uh, probably do comfortably through the chat effectively. Are there any questions? not hearing or seeing any questions. I will move on to the next presentation uh, and ask Robert Barron from the International Society for Ethnology and Folklore to present on the can their candidacy as an international NGO. Robert? Uh, thank you, Michael. I'm honored to be considered by all of you for uh, the uh, steering committee. It's been a, a great privilege and, and a joy to be involved in the ICH NGO forum. Uh, I represent the International Society for Ethnology and Folklore. We're a 92-year-old uh, organization with members in 49 different countries. And uh, our membership includes uh, uh, curators, administrators, researchers, many people working with communities collaboratively to safeguard their intangible cultural heritage. And we're involved in uh, convenings, in, um, in, in research as among the aggregate of our members, and uh, many of our members are involved in uh, advising governments and policy making capacities for ICH. And uh, we, we're located on many different continents. To say just a few words about myself, I uh, directed the um, folk arts program as well as the museum program at the New York State Council on the Arts. I was there for a number of years and I've been a uh, board member and a chair of uh, boards in uh, over five uh, different NGOs uh, on a uh, local, regional, and international, and an international basis. Um, I'd like to particularly focus on um, our forum and, 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 and think about what I might do as a representative of CF, International Society for Ethnology and Folklore, if uh, you uh, elect me to the steering committee. And uh, I feel that we're at an important turning point in the history of the uh, ICH NGO forum. As uh, most of you know, the Secretariat and the Intergovernmental Committee has asked us to perform advisory functions. We've identified these advisory functions and they include such things as um, advising about the uh, results framework, ICH and emergencies, safeguarding practices, uh, various dimensions of uh, policy as well. We have the capability of advising about all those areas and engage proactively. And we're, as an NGO, we have an independence from governments. And this is a very important dimension of our work. I, I was uh, involved in uh, creating the um, code of uh, conduct and the um, bylaws for the ICH NGO forum. And uh, we're at a point in the development of our organization where uh, we need to think about how we would adjust and adapt and and uh, engage in organizational development to accommodate new advisory functions. This might mean uh, looking for raise, ways to uh, raise funds, to think about what it would mean to uh, hire a, an administrator, for example, or uh, in the transition from an all volunteer organization to situations where we would receive uh, revenue and develop as a, uh, as a non-government organization in, in new ways. And we're an NGO of NGOs. So, so we, we're in a position where we can advise NGOs and, and work with other NGOs and conduct ourselves and develop as an NGO 
making further steps to to um, to work with the sec secretariat and and our members. Uh, a couple of key things which we should also be involved in doing is um, assist and advise and and to develop ways of extending accreditation to regions of the world where there are relatively few accredited NGOs. Uh, we should also think about new ways of communicating among ourselves. Uh, we already see this here in our, our Zoom meeting. And many, many NGOs aren't able to come to intergovernmental committee meetings and the ICH NGO forums. So we should begin to think about virtual means of um, getting together, communicating, uh, developing projects and carrying out our projects uh, through Zoom and, and, and means like that. And um, perhaps at, during the IGC meeting and, and perhaps in other times of the year, all of the work that we should do should be done uh, collaboratively among the steering committees, the working groups and the general membership. And I, I think we need to, to find new ways of enable, enabling the uh, working groups to, to, to uh, develop their work and uh, work in collaboration with, with all of us. So um, th these are my remarks. I, I've uh, been happy to be involved in, in some of the work that, that I've discussed in, in the development of the ICH NGO Forum. I've also uh, been involved in the research working group and the uh, results framework working group and, and the ethics working group. And uh, many of you may have seen my presentation earlier today, and I did one as well two years ago. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Robert. Are there questions for Robert? Not hearing any questions. Uh, before we move on to Asian and Pacific NGOs, I'd like to uh, go back and um, ask uh, Monica Tomingas uh, from the International Council of Organizations of Folklore Festivals and Folk Art, uh, if she would like to present. Yes, thank you, Michael. Good evening, everyone. I don't know what time is it for you, but at least it's evening for me. It's four o'clock in Estonia, it's dark outside, and I just came, uh, we just organized a folklore program in our Tallinn Christmas market. So that's where I came from. I'm still a bit cold. It's very cold outside and I'm really happy that I could join you. So a little bit about me. Uh, so I have been active in the culture field really as long as I can remember. And I have a background in dance and I have been singing all of my life really. And I did my bachelor degree in Tallinn University, the Depart department of choreography. And after that, I have been teaching dance, contemporary dance and Estonian folk dance. And I also have a master's degree from the Estonian Academy of Music and Theatre, and it's in culture and management. And I have been organizing culture since my school years as a volunteer with different festivals and also as a professional in different jobs and fields. And next year, I'm going to finish my second master's degree in andragogy, that is adult pedagogy. And I believe that learning more about adult education will help me also to be a better member of the society and also the field of ICH will definitely benefit from it. And it will also teach me how to work better with a focus on development. That is really something that I enjoy. I think one of my focuses has been on strat strategic development really. And at the moment, I work at the Estonian Folklore Council. It is a non-governmental organization set up on an inter interdisciplinary basis and it acts as the roof organization for all institutions which are practically organizationally and scientifically engaged in folk culture, arts and cultural heritage and functioning in accordance with the aims also with, uh, with uh, also um, UNESCO and also together with SIOP. So the aim is to safeguard, transmit and diffuse of traditional culture. And working for the Senior Folklore Council and also taking part of SIOP has really broadened my view of the culture field. And I really believe I can also contribute to the ICH NGO steering committee with it. I have lots of competences and knowledge and uh, I also organized uh, folklore festivals in Estonia and other places. And uh, also my interest is uh, taking part in the making of Estonian culture policy and uh, different committees. And I've also written and organized many, many projects. And at the moment I'm also teaching in Tallinn University project management. So this is really my expertise and I'm representing TSIOF, that is the International Council of Organizations of Folklore Festivals and Folk Art. 
and it has been it was created in 1970 and as i mentioned before the duty of tiof is to safeguard promotion promote and diffuse a traditional culture and folklore and at the present tiof worldwide membership covers 104 countries so different festivals, NGOs, and other cultural organizations are representing their own countries. And I am representing Estonia there, and I'm also the chairwoman of the Culture Commission. So this is what I also do daily. I face the challenges of making intangible cultural heritage visible, bringing it closer to the people of Estonia, and also internationally, and to stand for the people that work in the field. And I really believe that ICH is part of everyone's life, and it's very important to make people notice it more and how it is uh, really helping us to with our daily day-to-day -day challenges. And I hope I can really benefit for the NGO steering, uh, ICH steering committee uh, from my experiences and competences. And I really enjoy seeing the bigger picture in everything. I'm very straightforward and I'm a good planner and a good communicator. So I would really like to be part of a team and uh, thank you for listening to me. So if you have any questions, please, I'm ready, ready to answer. Thank you. Monica, thank you for staying to the time. Much appreciated. And uh, are there any questions for Monica? Thanks too for making the effort to come uh, in from the cold. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I, I see in the chat that uh, Yuan Chen Chen has, um, sorry, Chen Yuan Wan has joined us and um, I'm hoping that she will be able to make her presentation now. Uh, Michael, I think that she has problems with her speakers and she's going to get out and re-enter in order to try to fix them. So we may go with the next one and I'm, I'm checking with Chen uh, and when she returns, I'll tell you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll have to move her to the, I think it makes sense to move her to the end then uh, of the program so that the other groups can, can stay together. Um, so uh, having said that, I would like to ask uh, Ravi Shah to present on his organization as the first organization in the Asian Pacific region. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the wonderful people from all across the world. Uh, my name is Professor Ravi Sahu, uh, and uh, I represent uh, my organization called uh, Shri Hanuman Vyayam Prasarak Mandal. And uh, I have uh, applied uh, for the Asia Pacific Region for the steering committee. Uh, what my organization does and what I do over here and how my experience will be helpful uh, for smoothening the operations of the steering committee, especially in the Asia Pacific region. I would like to um, take permission from the chair uh, to share a small video. Uh, can I do that, sir? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it will stay within your three minute time, I hope. I will do that, sir. Thank you. Ravi, is there sound? I'm not hearing any sound. It will come, it will come. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for your time over there. Uh, those were the vibrant colors uh, that we spread with joy and happiness. We are uh, into promoting and safeguarding traditional sports and games of India, the indigenous game. Uh, we have been doing this from last 100 years and with an experience, uh, with an organizational experience of organizing, networking and uh, doing such events all across India. More than 400 we have done uh, in the past 100 years and more than 50 uh, across the world in major cities of the world. Now, when I say that I've been associated with uh, my NGO since last 11 years, being, an, being a master's uh, of business administration and marketing, I uh, bring with myself uh, the organizational skills and uh, the administration, the report drafting uh, and communicating with various organizations. And uh, all my experience came very handy when I was doing this kind of work across Europe and also across Asia in the recent past. Uh, I have also been uh, in um, handling the international relations of uh, my organization and handling the UNESCO ICH wing uh, uh, communication and uh, attending all the conventions uh, since last four years. Um, uh, with that, I would uh, also like to urge uh, that you give me a chance uh, because um, I would really uh, like to represent the Asian Pacific region and uh, contribute towards uh, uh, the wonderful development that we are uh, doing in the past and that we propose to do in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ravi. And thank you, Ravi, for uh, keeping your presentation uh, close to time. Much appreciated. Are there questions for Ravi about his candidacy or about his organization? Very well, thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, I'd like to call on Janet Blake from the Persian Garden Institute for Living Heritage to present uh, again as part of the Asia and the Pacific region. Thank you very much, Michael, and uh, hello to everybody. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Good. Okay. Um, so, well, you've already introduced my name and my uh, institute. Um, we are based in Tehran, in Iran, and I, where I'm also an associate professor of human rights law at the National University of Iran. Our NGO has been active in various areas of ICH safeguarding, research and research very much with a, an emphasis also on putting it into practice through pilot projects and whatever. Awareness raising at the beginning, but we've moved sort of on from that. And also we're now working with building the capacity of various communities for identification, inventoring. And for us, it's very important also to try to encourage the use or the, you know, ICH being a support to the livelihoods of the people we work with. So for example, women who uh, conduct, who have the embroidery element in the South of Iran, we're trying to help them to commercialize that to a degree that they're able to bring it to the market in Tehran and make a living from it. And we're also working um, on a project with migrants, uh, mainly Afghan, migrants to Iran, some of whom are even third generation, but still really like migrants, and how ICH, their ICH can uh, increase their social inclusiveness in the society. Personally, um, I've actually worked with the 2003 convention from its development through its drafting to its implementation, uh, including working for some years with preparing reports to the Intergovernmental Committee on the Periodic Reporting. I was part of the development of the overall results framework. And most recently, I revised the periodic reporting form for its current online version. And in fact, last week was the last of a three uh, webinar series expert meeting on educational indicators periodic reporting and SDG4, which I was the lead expert for, which we held online, which was quite an experience. And um, I'm also going to be part of the discussion on the listing mechanism when that expert meeting takes place. So uh, I should say that I've, I've got a fairly close connection with many of the developments within the convention that I know are also uh, of priorities for the forum. 
And I hope that that experience can certainly be valuable. But at the same time, I would like to stress that we are the only Iranian NGO at the moment accredited, one of very few from our sub-region. Uh, so I do hope that if I am a member of the steering committee, that that can help raise our profile in this region generally. And also that I have one or two very clever young colleagues that this would, I think, also be a good experience for them in terms of the support to this membership of the steering committee if we, if we are elected. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, too, for uh, trying to manage time with us. Much appreciated. Are there questions for Janet? not hearing or seeing questions, I will um, move on to the Western Europe and North America region and ask uh, Mati Hakamati Maki to present on the Finnish Folk Music Institute. Okay, greetings for all. Thank you, Michael. Um, and thank you for the nice, very nice, uh, important symposium. And uh, thank you for the electoral board and, and for the steering committee for organizing all these online happenings that are coming this is very 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 great and very much uh, looking forward to this next week so my name is Matti Hakamaki I'm uh, director of Finnish Folk Music Institute uh, we work, uh, work on the domain of uh, folk music folk dance uh, mainly in Finland but we work on uh, uh, local level national level and international level uh, especially with the communities of, of different folk music and folk, uh, folk dance domains in Finland. Also, uh, in international level, we have been organizing this uh, Nordic Baltic uh, network, uh, ICH network, and also we have been working with, uh, with this forum. And uh, we have been accredited uh, since 2018. And... Um, uh, Yes, our work uh, very much consists of uh, community work, uh, facilitating different domains. Uh, we have uh, archives, we work with education, we, uh, we have museum. So we actually work anything that, uh, that's promoting folk music and folk dance, especially in this uh, uh, Finland's region. Um, if uh, elected, uh, I would uh, address the three things. Uh, one of them would be the, the reporting, developing uh, of the, the, the reporting and formulating of the, the decisions of the, or the statements of, of the NGO forum. Um, this is very important work and that has been improved, uh, I think in, in many ways uh, in recent years. And this is uh, something to be continued. Also, the, the, commun the digital communication um, possibilities uh, should be enhanced still. But there is the same situation actually here that I'm very happy that we have, uh, we have been uh, proceeding with that task also uh, with a very, very great speed in the recent uh, months. And uh, then, of course, uh, I've been, yeah, I've been uh, involved in this formulating a new working group for for this uh, unbalance of the or the regional uh, geographical unbalance of the accredited NGOs, which means that we don't have enough uh, accredited NGOs from different uh, uh, regions. And then on the other hand, from different regions, we have kind of too many. But uh, this is just a, a, a issue that uh, I think is highly important. And, uh, and uh, this working group hopefully in the future will be one one way of addressing this problem. On next Saturday, we will have this meeting. So, so uh, very much welcome. 12.30 Paris time, I think it was. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Are there questions? Uh, one question for Mati from Patricio Lopez. Patricio, would you like to go ahead, please? Yes. Um, 
Hello to everyone, um, and thank you, Mati. I think it's uh, very interesting. Is that uh, I I completely agree that it's very important to work in terms of um, re, um, geographical imbalance between the NGOs, and I would like to ask you because as it is something important. Um, why? How do you see this compatible with the fact that um, the seat that you are applying for was before? Uh, uh, used by another uh, Nordic NGO, and is this way uh, is kind of contradictory. I would like you to talk about it because uh, it do is something very important for everyone. Thank you, Patricio. Yeah, uh, I think it's a very good question, and of course, it's uh, we should work with this. Uh, balance of uh, representativeness in many, many levels. And uh, we can never have the, the 100% uh, result, but then we have to aim for the best results with all, all our actions. And, and of course, this is one, well, one very important issue also here, and uh, that, uh, that uh, in the world we have these, these uh, electoral groups of United Nations, they are not just all the or the only kind of borders that we have drawn, but we also have uh, regional areas also that should be taken into account. Thank you, Mati, and thank you, Patricio, for the question. Are there other questions for Mati? Thank you. Hearing no other questions for Mati, um, I would like to ask uh, Laurier Turgian uh, from the Folk Studies Association of Canada uh, to present the, the candidacy. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, uh, I'm also very happy to be here and have been uh, very much enjoyed uh, the, um, the meeting uh, that was organized by the Working Group on Research uh, this morning. Uh, on tourism and, and ICH. Uh, je voudrais uh, saluer toutes les, les, les francophones. Uh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Uh, mon nom est Laurier Turchon. Uh, uh, I am professor of ethnology and folklore at Laval University in Quebec City, uh, Canada. I uh, represent the Folklore Studies Association of Canada, which is uh, comprised of uh, several hundred members uh, from uh, all parts of Canada, including uh, folklorists, researchers, uh, students, educators, uh, retired adults, um, practitioners, and uh, people interested uh, in folklore. Uh, the Folklore Studies Association uh, was created in 1976. Uh, I believe I can contribute, uh, if elected, to the steering committee uh, through my 30 years of teaching and doing research uh, and fieldwork uh, on ICH. Uh, uh, and also um, uh, my knowledge of the uh, convention. I have uh, indeed been involved in the convention since uh, its beginnings, uh, having participated in meetings uh, uh, dealing with the definition of ICH uh, and then in, in many expert meetings uh, since, uh, since uh, 2003. Uh, I have uh, four objectives. Uh, first, uh, I believe uh, it is crucial to increase the number of accredited NGOs, especially in uh, unrepresented uh, regions. Uh, currently, only about a third of the accredited NGOs participate at the meetings. I believe uh, we should strive to uh, get participation up to uh, at least 50% and ideally up to uh, 70 or 75% of accredited uh, NGOs, as well as um, encouraging uh, new NGOs from un unrepresented uh, regions uh, to uh, apply and to uh, become accredited. According to the UNESCO survey of 2019, uh, the obstacles, the primary obstacles to participation were uh, related to lack of funds. Uh, almost half of the NGOs uh, indicated that they were uh, having difficulty coming to the meetings because of lack of funds, but also uh, because of lack of information and lack of uh, capacities. Uh, a working group could be created to provide uh, more information and capacities to the new smaller NGOs, but especially to help uh, them secure funding from UNESCO through uh, other sources. Uh, the ICH International uh, Assistance Fund is currently underused 
as I'm sure uh, you are all aware. Uh, secondly, I would like to, um, uh, I find that it is of paramount importance that the ICH Forum play a more proactive role as an advisory body uh, by reporting more systematically to the Secretariat and the Intergovernmental uh, Committee. Uh, the working groups have proved to be very effective uh, in um, uh, offering uh, interesting venues for increased participation of forum members and in dealing with pressing issues. In my view, uh, the working groups could take on specific mandates with strategic objectives and enlarged participation. Some of the current issues that could be examined are uh, the uses of ICH in the context of crises, uh, the impacts of the pandemic on ICH, increased community participation, sustainable development and human rights. Thirdly, I would like to uh, help promote the uses of web technology to increase communication, participation, and collaboration within the ICH form. Uh, the pandemic, I believe, has contributed to improving uh, web technologies uh, and to making users, uh, professionals, as well as community members more familiar with their potentialities. Quatrièmement, étant bilingue, je pense pouvoir servir au rapprochement entre les membres francophones et anglophones du Forum. D'ailleurs, je salue le service de traduction offert au Forum, au forum cette année. Euh, je vous remercie de votre attention et au plaisir de travailler avec vous. Thank you. Thank you, Laurier. Uh, we have one question for you coming um, from Jean-Jacques. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't make out the rest of it. Uh, Jean-Jacques, would you like to go ahead? With your question. Oui, merci. Bonjour à, à tout le monde. Euh, Peut-être, puisque Laurier Turgeon en parle, profiter de ce service de traduction euh, très, très efficace. Donc, poser ma, ma question en, en français. Donc, en, en premier lieu, merci euh, Laurier Turgeon pour euh, cette euh, présentation très, très claire. Peut-être revenir sur un, un point que vous avez euh, soulevé. Euh, qui est euh, le PCI en contexte de, voilà, de, crise, de crise internationale, qu'elle soit sanitaire, euh, conflit armé, etc. Voilà, comment euh, comment pourrait-on euh, euh, se mobiliser les ONG, euh, mobiliser le PCI euh, dans ces, dans ces contextes-là euh, Si vous pouvez développer un peu ce point euh, oui, bien sûr, bien sûr. Euh, ben merci, merci pour la question. Je pense que c'est une question très pertinente hein, parce que c'est un enjeu important. Euh, bon, ben, le, le secrétariat avait organisé une réunion d'experts euh, en mai 2019 euh, qui portait spécifiquement sur cette question. Euh, J'avais alors représenté euh, le forum. J'avais été demandé par le comité de pilotage de représenter le forum à cette à cette réunion euh, qui a été euh, très intéressante et qui a abouti hein, à, à l'adoption des, des principes euh, à la réunion euh, du comité euh, en septembre euh, dernier. Mais euh, euh, je crois que euh, c'est une façon euh, euh, très intéressante de valoriser le, le, le patrimoine culturel immatériel euh, parce que, euh, bon, d'un côté, euh, en gros, euh, euh, je pense que ce qui pourrait être fait et ce qui a été souligné d'ailleurs dans le rapport euh, qui a été soumis euh, et présenté par l'UNESCO, euh, par le secrétariat de l'UNESCO, c'est que euh, euh, les ONG peuvent jouer un rôle très important dans le, euh, dans, dans le recensement et dans l'inventaire euh, des pratiques qui sont menacées euh, en raison des conf conflits armés ou encore euh, en raison des changements climatiques, euh, mais euh, pas seulement, euh, pas seulement euh, cela, euh, mais pourrait avoir un rôle beaucoup plus euh, actif, euh, hein, euh, comme un agent actif euh, qui pourrait mobiliser euh, le patrimoine culturel et matériel pour faire face euh, aux crises. Euh, C'est-à-dire, par exemple, dans le cas de tremblements de terre, euh, de cyclones euh, liés à des changements climatiques euh, dans les tropiques, par exemple, eh bien, euh, des, euh, des, des, des fêtes, des festivals, euh, même, bon, j'ai eu 
l'occasion de travailler un petit peu en Haïti, euh, il y a des ONG et puis des communautés qui ont organisé euh, des rituels voodoo euh, pour faire le deuil, en quelque sorte, de ces catastrophes, de tous les morts euh, qui avaient été, euh, des personnes qui ont été frappées euh, et même euh, les personnes qui sont décédées. Euh, et donc, euh, euh, les rituels euh, religieux, comme le voodoo, euh, peut être une façon très efficace de faire le deuil, euh, de tourner la page, en quelque sorte, sur ces catastrophes euh, et puis de, de reconstruire de l'espoir dans l'avenir, euh, vous voyez. Alors, euh, euh, il y a aussi bon, d'autres exemples sur lesquels j'ai travaillé dans le Nord canadien, par exemple, où euh, les transformations climatiques euh, euh, contribuent à perturber les habitudes de chasse, les mouvements migratoires des animaux, euh, les habitudes de chasse des autochtones euh, et puis aussi même euh, la cueillette de plantes pour des pratiques médicinales parce que avec les changements climatiques, les plantes euh, qui poussaient à tel et tel endroit euh, ne y poussent plus euh, ou même n'existent plus euh, et donc ça oblige euh, les populations de s'adapter Hein, euh, à, ces, euh, à ces changements euh, climatiques. Et puis, le, le patrimoine culturel et matériel pourrait, là, euh, peut jouer un rôle euh, vraiment très actif euh, pour faire face euh, aux euh, euh, au problèmes, vous voyez? Oui. Alors, je pense que c'est vraiment euh, un, un endroit, un lieu où euh, on peut valoriser euh, énormément euh, le patrimoine culturel euh, immatériel. Merci beaucoup. Voilà. It's, very, uh, it's, it's terrific that we've had a, an intervention in French. Um, and um, although I can follow you, I don't dare to try and translate. Um, we would like to, um, uh, first let me ask if there are any more questions for Laurier. Not hearing any. Um, we'd like to, uh, turn back now to the international NGOs and see if Chen Yuan Wan is able to speak to us. Uh, if not, we will actually uh, queue up the video that was provided by her organization. And I'm being told that she is not able to intervene and she's having technical difficulties. Uh, she's been present and been trying to resolve them for the last 45 minutes. Um, so um, the YouTube uh, video is here in the chat and you can see that. Um, we also have uh, one other organization uh, not represented with us today and um, that's uh, the uh, Ajine CRC team from the Cultural Research Center uh, and for the Asia group and um, uh, Ms. Cholponai UG is not able to join us, uh, was not able to join us, and um, we will put the link to her organization's video into the chat uh, right now. Thanks, uh, Anyana, for that support there. Very helpful. Uh, yes, Gustavo has a question. Uh, Gustavo, would you like to raise your question, please? Yes, thank you very much. First of all, I wish to congratulate uh, all the candidates for submitting the proposal. I think it's very important to have this kind of participation. Looking forward to work with uh, who, whomever is selected in the steering committee and uh, giving all the support to, to, the, to all the candidates, uh, all those who, who can achieve and those who participated, they're all important for us. I just wanted to state that it's very important to understand that um, what it's being elected here is the people who's going to work all the year in uh, the steering committee and delivering work for the NGOs, working for them and working with uh, in coordination for UNESCO, facilitating information to the NGOs, being open and being inclusive is, is the goal of the steering committee. In that sense, I just wanted uh, to remark to all the present NGOs that take in consideration that you're electing people to work uh, for you. And in that sense, please uh, think about your vote. Thank you very much. And also consider uh, um, 
that this is a very important uh, issue and thank you for the participation. Okay. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you. Um, yeah. We've just received news that Chen Yuan Wan has been able to access our forum. And so um, we'd like to provide an opportunity for her to present the candidacy um, of her organization, FIADIFTA. She's telling us that she can't hear us. Let me tell her uh, if she can begin, maybe. We are experiencing, still experiencing so some pro problems with Chen. I think Michael that we shall go forward because they uh, they were not able to to fix their speakers and their micro. Nevertheless, that we may see her, they are not uh, able to present. I think. No. Chen, do you hear us? No. No, she's having problems. I can see her in the screen, but she... Carlos, are you able to hear me? Excuse me. I think that you shall go forward because we can't, she, we are not able to hear her and she's not uh, uh, in this moment uh, available to, to present. So I think that we need to go forward. Michael? Michael? Michael, we can't hear you. Me? No, well, we can't hear Michael. I don't know what happened. But, well, we have all the presentations uh, uh, in, in, this, in this place. You may check them. You are going to receive all the, uh, li the link for, the, for uh, the, your vote. Today at 4.30, uh, well, in a few minutes, I no, you have already received the, the voting link. So please uh, vote. Uh, we, have, we don't have uh, candidates for the African region, but we hope that we will uh, know what will happen in the next session. And uh, well, Ananya, if there's nothing else for this, uh, for this uh, presentation, I'll say, Thank you, and um, Carlos. Yes. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Anjana. I'll just add that uh, in the voting uh, software in the link, you will see the names, and there will be an option to select one NGO from each group, and altogether three. The system will not validate if you click multiple NGOs from the same group, but your vote will be rejected. So please ensure that you select only one NGO from each group and all together three. Okay. Let, let us tell you that we have checked this system is a different system because of the situation, but it's uh, rele reliable and we think that is the best way uh, to do this. So please uh, vote. Uh, you can only vote once. We also check that and the vote is not uh, linked with a specific name, so it's anonymous, so feel absolutely comfortable. And well, Michael, I don't know if you want to, to, to say something to finish this session. Um, thank you. Uh, I wanted to um, 
offer the floor uh, to Meg uh, Nomgard because she uh, wanted to speak on behalf of the forum. Yes, thank you very much. I would like to thank you, the election board, for organizing our election. And I know we have gone, and you especially have gone through a lot of thinking on how to do this on a safe and good way in an online version. So thank you for all your hard work and thank you for all those of you who are candidated. It's very important to have candidates to vote for. And I think you all did very nice presentations. Thank you so much. And uh, I would also like to emphasize, don't forget to vote. And uh, we also like to thank you, the NGO CQPY, who have provided me for us to have interpretation uh, during this session and during the symposium. It's really, really great to have uh, the input in translation this time. And uh, I hope you all have seen the program of the activity the forum offers during the 15 com. And I do hope to see you all here on this Zoom link again. Uh, we will have something going on every single day. So uh, we will see each other a lot the next coming week, which I'm looking forward to. Okay, thank you all. And by this, uh, we would like to thank you and see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Thank, thank you. you all. Nice to see you. Merci. Merci. Gracias. Gracias por, por la Gracias. participación.